My name is Michael. I'm a young guy and I've got a lot of questions. And they're big questions. Like, what are my dreams? What do I want to do? And who do I want to be? I've thought about doing so many things with my life. I have so many options. My parents think I should study, work hard, and get a decent job with a good salary. My mates say that I should stop worrying about it and sort it out later. You know, like, what's the rush? And there are things on the TV and on the internet, which I've got to admit, suggest a pretty tempting way of living. I know I am being called to do something. I am meant to be someone. And I know that there are real answers to my questions. It's just that these days, in our culture, it's really hard to hear. So many people seem to race through their lives, but what for? We need to take the time to stop and listen. I need to stop and listen. I need space to think things through. I know that there is a voice calling me. Through all the noise and busyness of life. Offering me the answers I'm looking for. I want to know what my call is. What is my vocation? A vocation is a call from God. The first calling of every human being is to be holy, to be like God. I am his cherished son or daughter, created to be truly happy, created by love, to love. And I do think it's really important that every young man at some stage ask himself the question, Lord, what is it you want me to do with my life? This life that you've given me, what do you want me to do with it? Could the vocation that you have in mind for me, could the path to holiness that you have in mind for me be the priesthood? A priest is someone who has given himself to Jesus Christ and is ready to serve Jesus Christ in his people. The priest must strive to have the mind of Christ. His most wonderful privilege given to him by Jesus Christ at ordination is the privilege of celebrating the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Only the priest can make Christ's presence in the Eucharist, only the priest can administer the sacrament of reconciliation. And so that's why God's calling men to the priesthood. The culture of death promises perfect happiness. It promises that all your desires will be fulfilled and of course that's a great lie. Your own life is something 
from God. It's not something created by society. And there's not a list of desires that you have to sign up to. Um, and it's really only in God that you can find out who you really are. I think it was a realization that although my day job was satisfying, it didn't really completely fulfill me, that there was something still lacking. I began to grow in the realization that actually I think that priesthood is the thing that I really want to do. make me happy. In order to do that, he asks us to be open. He asks us to give him space. He asks us to give him a chance to listen to him. How many people do we listen to each day? How many people do we let into our lives? How many television, movie, music celebrities do we listen to? Do we make space for in our hearts? Let's give God the opportunity to speak to us. Let's stand back from all of this for a moment and say, now God, this is your opportunity. Speak to me, I'm yours. Help me to open my heart, my mind, my eyes and ears. I'm ready to listen to you. I think all young Catholic men who are taking their faith seriously should think about the priesthood at least to some extent. I mean, they should give it a try and give it an honest try. It's an amazing gift and, uh, uh, and if you're being given that gift, uh, you should do everything uh, to respond to it. The first thing I would say to someone who is thinking about it is to pray. Because at the end of the day, it's the prayer that matters. It's the prayer that makes the priest. The place to begin is always going to be in prayer. Look at your life. Go to a point towards the projected end of your life and look back and see what it is that God would have wanted you to do. You don't have to be a priest. You can do whatever you want. But if you want to be a priest, um, at some point you need, to, you need to make a decision. You're giving as much as you can to the people you're serving. You're not pushing any limits on, on your love. You're trying to, to let that love of Jesus flow through you completely. You realize that your life is really made for something much greater than you. The fire of the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and sets our hearts on fire. And that's what drives us. That's what gives us our energy to follow Christ. Um, and it's also a fire that purifies us, that no matter what weakness or what obstacle we find in our hearts, that fire can burn it away. No matter what sin that's been committed, the most, you think of the most terrible sin, then that can be forgiven in the sacrament of confession. And the sacrament of confession not only forgives sins, but it gives a grace, it gives sacramental grace and sanctifying grace to the soul. So every time a person um, goes to confession, then he receives say, a dose of holiness. We have to be aware that we need his grace, really, to function as a priest. If you're going to go for priesthood, then God has to be the centre of your life and you have to rely on him and him alone. Never feel afraid to, to answer yes to God's call because Answering yes to God's call enables us to find out who our true self is, in a sense. And in finding out our true self, our true vocation, then that can only lead us to happiness and fulfilment. I want to have that sense of happiness. 
that sense of fulfillment. The guys I've spoken to seem to have that. They seem to have found what they're looking for, something greater than themselves. They found a richness to life. And now it's time for me to respond. Because I know I've got a calling. And I want to work out if it's to the priesthood. Don't look for certainty. Follow the call, follow the inclination, and allow the church to discern with you. Pope is important because he is the Pope. He's the successor of Peter, and Peter was the man who Christ entrusted the fullness of Catholic faith to, and that's why he's important. He's given the youth in the church exactly what they need at the moment. He's helped us to resonate with our Catholic tradition and he's proclaimed Christ unflinchingly to the world. Young friends, only Jesus knows what definite service he has in mind for you. Be open to his voice, resounding in the depths of your heart. Even now his heart is speaking to your heart. Christ has need of families to remind the world of the dignity of human love and the beauty of family life. He needs souls who will consecrate their lives is a pursuit of perfect charity, following him in chastity, poverty and obedience, and serving him in the least of our brothers and sisters. And he needs priests, good and holy priests, men who are willing to lay down their lives for their sheep. Ask your Lord, what he has in mind for you. Ask him for the generosity to say yes. Do not be afraid to give yourself totally to Jesus. He will give you the grace you need to fulfill your vocation. Celibacy has always been honoured in Catholic tradition since the time of Christ. And for me, I've always understood it as the way to completely give yourself in love for service of the church. If you're feeling as if you want to get married, you shouldn't take it necessarily as a sign that you're not going to be a priest. There are a lot of people that I know in seminary who still experience that strong desire to be married. It's not a bad thing. It needs to be acknowledged. What you need to work out is whether or not you're called to complete service, complete service for the Lord. Nobody can be a priest because they want to be a priest, and nobody has a right to be a priest. It's a gift, it's a calling that comes from Christ. It's only on the day of ordination when the bishop says, I call this man for service in the presbyteral order, that that sense of vocation is finally confirmed by the church. I sensed that 
I was being called to do something extraordinary. The prospect of having my world turned upside down was quite frightening and disconcerting. But I have to say honestly, I haven't regretted it for one minute. It's been fantastic. St. Paul says, Omni Apostle in Eo Qui Me Comfortat, I can do all things in Him who gives me strength. And we have to have that confidence that the Lord depends not upon our own virtue or merit, but rather He gives us His grace to fulfill the task that He has in mind for us. So the priest has to be faithful, the priest has to be strong, he has to persevere, and he has to maintain that gift of himself in love to Christ and through Christ to the people that he's called to serve. We need priests who are uh, deeply prayerful, but I want to say even more than that, we need priests in the first instance who are true sons of the church, who understand that as a priest, they're not preaching their own gospel. They're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ as it has been revealed to us through the church. Faithfulness to God's word and to Christ's truth as proclaimed in the church is extremely important. Because if we don't show faithfulness to that, we run a risk of not proclaiming Christ, but proclaiming ourselves to people. When you enter into a process of discernment, you are revealing your generosity, your willingness to listen to God, your willingness to hear what he has to say and to reveal his plan for you. Do you understand that God is calling you to be a saint today? Not in eight or 10 years time when you become a priest, but today, now. Through your baptism, God has called you to be holy, to be like him. Holiness, the journey to sainthood, begins today, now. I think you should get up, follow Christ, be brave, allow the church to decide with you whether or not you have a vocation. Whatever your vocation is, um, it's, it's an onus on you to discern it, to find it, and in finding it, you will actually find true happiness and fulfillment. God may be calling you. And so I'd say, think about it, pray about it, and take up, if, if you think that God might be calling you, then really uh, go into that personal place, which is your own heart, and with generosity, ask God to help you to at least think about saying yes, and then hopefully later on to, to say yes, because God, has been calling young men to the priesthood for 2,000 years and he will continue to because we must have priests. We must have priests to bring the love of God to the world that is so much in need of his love, especially at the moment.
I know I have a calling. A calling to an amazing, full, giving and enjoyable life. And I think my calling is to the priesthood. I have met a lot of priests who have given themselves totally for others, who've offered themselves up to bring others to Christ, and they have received so much in return. It's a challenge. It's a big challenge. But such an amazing call to respond to. And you know what? I'm going to give it a go.